This video is on writing your executive summary. My name is Nisha Shamugaraj, and I'm the Associate Director of the Global Communications Center. If you don't know, the GCC is Carnegie Mellon's resource um, for communication consulting. So you can make hour-long sessions with our expert communication consultants and get feedback on your papers and presentations. If you're interested in making your free hour-long appointment or attending one of our workshops, you can visit our website at cmu.edu slash gcc. Today, our communication topic is going to be on writing an executive summary to your research report in engineering. So first of all, why should we, why should we care about this? Well, a recent study, uh, a nationwide study, suggested that communication skills are one of the most important career readiness competencies of recent graduates who are seeking employment. Unfortunately, only 40% of recent grads were rated as having acceptable communication skills by employers. This is a, a particularly important problem for engineers. So engineers have um, extremely technical and specialist knowledge and may often struggle to explain this knowledge to non-engineering decision makers. And these decision makers are often in very high-level positions, so CEOs, high-level division chiefs. Those engineers who can do this communication um, of their knowledge to a non-specialist are the ones who are more likely to be valuable to their organizations and more likely to get promoted to a higher level position themselves. So one way that as an engineer you can convey quickly that you have effective communication skills and you can even showcase these skills is through an executive summary. So that is the focus of our video today. So first of all, what is an executive summary? So an executive summary is a one-page document most of the time. Now, this is a one-page summary that condenses your much longer research report um, into a brief summary that explains and interprets your most important findings for a non-technical audience. Now, your audience is not just non-technical, but we want to consider your audience as an important, very busy executive who not only is very busy, but needs to make a decision simply based on your executive summary. So based on your report, they need to make a decision. So you have probably written um, an analogous uh, summary in academic texts in the form of an abstract. So an abstract is essentially oftentimes a one paragraph overview of your academic uh, research report. Um, the executive summary is the same thing, simply used in industry, um, so in business. Uh, and it doesn't have to be one paragraph. They are, as I said, most often about one page. But again, the purpose of this report is for you, or uh, the purpose of this executive summary rather, is for you to have this in addition to your report and have your executive quickly read this summary and understand what your report is about, what the main takeaways from your report are, and what they should do to act on that information. So this executive summary is a surrogate, a replacement, if need be, for your entire report. And where the executive has questions, for, wants further detail, then they can visit your report to find that information. So I have said that these are one page, and that is the case most of the time. However, an executive summary might be somewhat shorter or longer, depending on your total report length. So for instance, if you have a 100-page report, your executive summary may be a little bit longer. So this is a brief overview of what an executive summary is, but how do you write one effectively? So I want to talk about two overall, um, overall best practices for writing your executive summary. Putting information where your busy reader expects to find it, and then interpreting your evidence for a busy reader. So interestingly, both of these things do not just apply to executive summaries. Most effective communication will actually do these things, regardless of what you are writing. Um, but we're going to see how these two things apply to an executive summary. So first of all, putting information where your busy reader expects to find it. So 
your reader is going to expect to find certain information in certain locations in your executive summary. But that's actually going to depend on what type of research that you are doing. So there's actually two main types of uh, engineering research, experimental and then problem solution evaluation research. I might just call it problem solution for brevity's sake. So experimental research is often called basic research. Um, so this is research that's often done in the natural sciences um, that is oftentimes testing a hypothesis. So you are maybe controlling and manipulating variables to test a hypothesis to see how the world works or explore a certain phenomenon. So for instance, what is the exact mechanism causing the fish hook effect for particle separation, for instance? Now problem solution work is similar but has an important distinction. So problem solution work is focused on a problem. So it's focused on a problem in the real world or in your field and you are attempting to find a solution or at least start to chip away at a solution. So for instance, can we improve fault analysis in reactors with support vector machines? So um, being able to do fault analysis in a reactor um, and having inefficient or inaccurate fault analysis, that is a really important real world problem. Your research then is trying to solve that problem. Now, depending on what type of research that you are doing, and, and think for a minute as I'm talking what type of research your work falls into, so depending on what type of research you're doing, you are going to have a different expected or conventional structure for your executive summary. So experimental research most often uses what is called the IMRAD structure. And IMRAD just stands for introduction, methods, results, and discussion. Um, now in this IMRAD structure, essentially uh, I've put it here as an hourglass shape because you can think of each section as being a different uh, having a different level of breadth, so being uh, having varying levels of broadness depending on what section you're in. So the introduction, this is big high level things. So most often there is a motivation for why you did this work in the first place and your research question. So the question that you are hoping to answer. Your methods, these are then the procedures that you followed uh, more often than not in experimental research. So what you did. Um, to obtain your results. You then have your results, so what you actually found, the uh, various results you found, and there's often primary results and then secondary stories you want to tell as well. And then lastly you have your discussion section where you connect everything back to the bigger, kind of bigger picture. So connect to um, related work or um, explain kind of the implications of this work. And again you can think of this IMRAD structures having an hourglass shape. So going from broad big picture motivation to narrow the nitty gritty details of what you did and what you found and then back to broad with the discussion section. Now there is a second type as we discussed, so problem solution evaluation research. So problem solution research is a little bit different. So you start out with the problem, so what the problem is and why should we care about this problem. You then offer your solution. So the uh, assumptions and design parameters and model of whatever it is you are proposing as a solution. You then oftentimes evaluate that solution, so you test if the solution worked or worked as well as you thought it would. And then finally, you talk um, most of the time in a conclusion about applications or how we should go about adopting this solution. Um, so what's wrong? What is your solution? How well does it work? Um, and then what should I do with this solution? So again, we still have that hourglass framework. Now for both problem solution and um, uh, IMRAD, there is a certain way that we can integrate the executive summary into this report. Essentially, you can think of the executive summary as the report in miniature. So you have this entire report and then squish it down, condense it, distill and extract the most important information to one smaller version of your report, so a one-page version of your report. 
For IMRAD, you are going to be taking the entire IMRAD structure and squishing that down. For problem solution evaluation and then conclusion down here, you are going to be doing the same exact thing. Now, the executive summary, while you think it may just be a small version of your report, is actually probably more important than the entire report. So research was done on how likely a manager was to read each of these sections of the report. And this was for a traditional IMRAD report. You can go ahead and pause your video and see if you can predict the percent of time that managers read each of these sections. So maybe surprisingly, or perhaps unsurprisingly, executive summaries are the only part of the report that is read 100% of the time. People are then likely to skim the introduction to get some basic context, and then probably go to your discussion section where they get more information on the implications, conclusions about what actions they need to take. Um, so what you can kind of garner from here as well is that this IMRAD or problem solution structure is non-linear. People do not, especially busy executives, do not read this cover to cover from the first page to the last page. So they skip around depending on what information they want to find. So again, going back to our um, big picture principle here, put information where your busy reader expects to find it. So your busy reader is not going to be expecting to find either an IMRAD structure and a problem solution structure, and in each of those sections they are going to expect to find conventional information. Um, if they don't find it there, they will likely get confused or irritated, which you do not want. The second way to put information where your busy reader expects to find it is by using topic sentences. So a topic sentence is the first sentence of your paragraph. Sometimes it can also include the second sentence. But information in your topic sentence, research has shown, is going to be more likely to be read and remembered. So what you want to do in your topic sentence is include your most important information, the single main idea, the most important information in that entire paragraph. So that crucial information should be in your topic sentence to really jump out at your reader. This is because, and research has shown us, that readers are going to be more likely at the beginning of the paragraph to be paying attention, and then the later you get, the further you go down into the paragraph, the more readers are going to be likely to skim and not read that information. Another thing you can note when you are creating effective topic sentences is effective academic phrases. Here we see when research has shown that. So try using signaling language in your topic sentences to really signal to your reader where important information is located. So there are different uh, conventional phrases for each section. So for instance, in the results section, I might see language such as results show or we find that. Um, and a great way, besides just reading articles in your field, to find some of that signaling language is in this a book that recently came out, um, the only academic phrase book you'll ever need, 600 Examples of Academic Language. And um, this kind of guidebook offers a lot of conventional signaling phrases that are used. So this is the, the first two things here. So put information where your busy reader expects to find it, and as part of that, you want to use a predictable structure and use topic sentences. So going on to our second principle here, you want to also interpret your evidence for a busy reader. Now the first way to interpret evidence for a busy reader is actually going to be identifying your main news. So that is what we're going to talk about first here. So when I say identifying your news, essentially when you write your executive summary, you want to think about what an executive will find newsworthy. If you had to distill your entire executive summary, really your entire report, into a single newspaper headline, what would that headline be? Now that headline is probably going to vary based on what type of research you're doing. If you're doing experimental research, your headline's probably going to be your results. Um, so that results show that a certain compound outperformed another one. 
in problem solution research, your headline is probably going to be the solution and its details or implementation. So for instance, a novel model for adaptive traffic signalization is proposed to reduce urban traffic during rush hour. So this is, this is very, very important. To interpret that evidence for your reader, you want to just not only present the various um, numbers that you found, but also interpret that into a takeaway. So give your reader a bottom line newspaper headline. However, you want to make sure that you're balancing that interpretation with precision that your reader is going to want and expect. So despite the fact that your manager or um, executive may be a non-specialist, they still have fairly rigorous and stringent standards of expectations in terms of the legwork they've expected you to do. So what you want to make sure to do, especially in an engineering context, is to put that evidence into context by using precise comparisons. So here's our before example. Um, the internal rate of return for the proposed plan is lower than the baseline. Okay, as an executive, I'd be like, all right, what was the baseline? Was the baseline already good? Was the baseline bad? How much better was the proposed plan? Was it 99% uh, better or was it 1% better? Um, so if we look at our revised example, so our economic analysis found that the IRI was 4.3% compared to the 3.26 of the proposed plan, suggesting that the baseline is actually more attractive. This is wonderful and it does both of the principles I've just talked about. It interprets your evidence into a bottom line takeaway, into kind of a newspaper headline. It also balances that broad high level strokes with the precision and comparisons that I need to make a decision. So this is our content for you today. Um, and again, both of these principles, while they apply to an executive summary, they also really apply for your writing in general. So using a predictable structure and topic sentences, and then being sure to interpret your evidence for a busy reader in both the newspaper headline way, but also with the um, precise comparisons that are going to back that up. Now, what I want to do is actually take a look at a few examples. So go ahead and pull up the handout that is attached to um, the handout that is attached to this uh, this video. So once you've pulled up the attached handout, go ahead and pause your video and read both executive summary example A and B. Uh, once you've read these, you can go ahead and replay your video and we will talk about um, which one is stronger. So there are a number of reasons why example B is stronger than example A and they fit with the um, principles that we've just talked about. So both of these um, examples actually use uh, the IMRAD structure. So they are putting information where their readers expect to find it. However, it is very hard for me as a reader to pick up on that information. So this is largely because of the idea of topic sentences and signaling language that we talked about. So it's very hard if I were to skim here where their main news is, and that's largely because their information um, in the topic sentences isn't as um, clearly signaled as it could be. If we look at example, uh, B, we see important information in good locations. So we see this report compares this traditional one to this new one that they're trying. This report also investigates these certain effects, which in example A, it was hard to tell what their research question actually was. I could not even tell that they had two research aims. We then clearly see their methods here. We use this plant as our baseline, and we determine cost estimates by investigating this. We also see their results clearly signaled. Our results contradict this theory, and we found this. Our economic analyses found this. 
Again, in example A, it is actually very hard to figure out what their main results are, their main newspaper headline. And here, this is actually the weak example that we saw in, in our presentation. And in this example, we see, we see that strong example with uh, precise figures and clear comparisons. So if you're completing this video for a class, be sure to bring in your insights, your further insights to um, to examples A and B. If you are completing this and found this on our workshop, be sure to make a one-on-one -on -one appointment to talk about the differences further between these two abstracts and also, or I'm sorry, between these two executive summaries and also bring in your own executive summary for review. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you soon.